Hello, hello, hello. This is Lamar, the owner of Appliance Professionals based in Crestwood, Kentucky, serving the people of Oldham County and surrounding areas. All right, so yeah, I received a few questions this week from customers. And the next the question they asked was, hey, when's your next podcast episode? So I'm like, yeah, people are really listening to me, and I appreciate the love and support. So I had to get back here in the studio and uh, talk a little more about what's going on, what's going on with the appliances in the area, what's going on with our company. Um, because at the end of the day, I'm just, I'm really passionate about appliance repair. Like for me, my wife would tell you, this is all I talk about all the time, all the time. Like I'm locked in. This is not a, you know, weekend mess around, you know, a couple of jobs as a side hustle. Like, I'm dedicating my time, effort, and energy to doing appliance repair the right way and treating people like I want to be treated and just providing a great service. You know, that down-home, small business. I mean, I have customers, look, call me on my cell phone, text me in the morning, hey, Lamar, can you come by and look at my washer? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'll fit you in. I'll take care of you. So that, that, that's what I strive to do. Um, we had a, a lot of jobs this week. So we did 21 job. Well, yeah, we did 21 jobs this week, mostly in the Oldham County area. Um, over half of those were repeat customers. And about 65% were first call completes. What does that really mean, right? The first call complete is something that I measure. And what that means is, I come to your house, the first time I come to your house, I complete your repair. Now, you know, I'm a little lenient on that number. As long as it's done the same day, I still call it a first call complete. So if you call me Tuesday, I come out there, I fix your issue, it's resolved, I call it a first call complete. And a lot of benefits of that. For you, it's saving you time, money. I know you like hearing me, but you probably want me to come to your house three or four or five times. Um, for me, it allows me to provide you with the world-class service you deserve and uh, and not keep coming back, you know. I keep rolling the truck back to your house. So we just try to implement things on a continual basis uh, to get better at that. So I'm going to start off with a little story here. So I was a young lieutenant down at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. And we were out in the field. Hey, and look, me coming from the Air Force, I wasn't about that field life coming over to the Army. I was like, hmm, so no longer in five-star hotels, but when we go dig a trench and <laughs> help set this tent up, <laughs> sleep outside and, and swat at mosquitoes. Uh, okay, all right. Well, I'm here now, so I guess I better figure it out. Um, so anyway, so we're doing this briefing out in the field. And, you know, we were lieutenants, so pretty much as a lieutenant, uh, officer yells something out, you just start running and you start doing. So we're doing this briefing that day. And the briefer before me, you know, you have that, that, that uh, the, the pointer, the metal pointer. I don't know, but he, he lost that metal pointer. So I'm walking up here. You know, I'm like three minutes in. I'm like, okay, where's this pointer at? And so the instructor's name was Captain Pruitt. He's looking at me do this. You know, he, he old country Tennessee boy. So he has this chewing tobacco in his mouth. And he's like, he's like, break the off. take off. And I'm, I'm like, what? And so I don't know if he switched the tobacco over or spit it out while I wasn't looking. I don't know. But clear as day, he looked at me and he said, go outside and break a doggone stick off. So I go running outside, find me a stick, run back in. He's like, okay, now finish your briefing. And that lesson stuck with me, right? I could have been there for, shoot, probably 30 minutes looking for this dang pointer. Or I could have went outside and just broke a stick off, came back, accomplished the mission. Because that was just too small to hijack everything I had to accomplish. And that's how I feel about appliance repair. You know, when I come to somebody's house, I'm trying to solve the problem. And it's not always a linear solution, right? 
And so you got to find ways to, um, you know, respect what the customer needs and wants, but also use your knowledge and theory to provide them with the best solution possible, or at least options. You know, sometimes it's sometimes like, hey, sir, ma'am, we can do this, but here's the pros and cons of that. We can do this, but here's the pros and cons of that. So I took this lesson and I had a customer who had a uh, GE refrigerator. And so the refrigerator wasn't keeping food cold. So I come there, diagnose it. It's on a Friday, after, Friday evening, actually. And so I test out all the fans and found out the fan on the back, which is a condenser fan, um, wasn't working. So as a result, the coolant couldn't, I'm sorry, not coolant, refrigerant. The refrigerant couldn't flow properly do its thing. So I told the customer, I said, look, here's the deal. I can't get to the store till Friday, but I know enough about theory that if I put this little shop fan in the back of this refrigerator and blow across here to simulate the fan working in the fridge, I keep your food cold for the weekend so you won't lose any food. Like, she looked at me like I just performed magic. Um, and so we did that. Came back Monday, put the new fan in. She was so happy. First thing she said, oh, Lamar, my, my food stayed cold. It was making ice. I had ice all weekend. I said, hey, that's what we do, ma'am. You know, in my mind, I'm going back to the lesson I learned, right? I said to break a stick off and just figure it out. And that's what I try to do day by day as I, as I go through uh, the county as I work with people. Treat you like I want to be treated, okay? And work with you and understand. We're all out here trying to accomplish the same thing. I hope <laughs> provide great service and treat people like we want to be treated. All right, so this week I'm gonna talk about some of the jobs I had. Like I had an exciting week. Like I felt like these jobs, uh, these customers, my Oldham County family, man, we just we just had a great time. We just had a great time. Like, I'm that guy where I, I ain't trying to do 100 jobs a week. So I'll pull up a chair, sit down, have a conversation, watch some college football if you got it on TV. That's just, that's just how I am, you know. But that's the benefit of being a retired guy, right? I can just go out here and just, just play for the love of the game and just treat people right and uh, balance my time out. So one of the jobs I had early in the week uh, was a customer, and this was actually in Louisville. So the customer um, had a dishwasher, the Samsung dishwasher that wasn't working properly. So we're sitting there talking, and she owns a couple of units. It's pretty nice, pretty nice gated area. Owns a couple of units that are you know rented out, and so diagnosed it identified that the repair cost for this machine repair cost for this machine which was over eight years old it wasn't justified like there's no way i could justify that type of number for the parts and labor needed for this samsung dishwasher so i made a suggestion i was like how about we get a new dishwasher let's look at some pricing we went on Home Depot app, look at some pricing. How about we look at a new dishwasher, a Whirlpool brand. They got some pretty, they have some pretty good sales right now. And have them deliver it. I will install it and haul the old one away. So we worked that out. And so as I took this Samsung dishwasher out, I'm looking at this thing. And so the first thing I see is, so in a dishwasher, most people have it hardwired, right? Like you'll never see the cord because it's hardwired into the house. That's most people, at least in this market. But some people have it where it goes through the cabinet and it plugs into the outlet. Or it maybe it doesn't go through the cabinet, it's just an outlet behind the dishwasher. But this one had an outlet behind the dishwasher. And I'm looking at this, this cord, you know, there's a certain gauge, a thickness of, 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 of uh, of your, of your power cord going to your dishwasher. Well, somebody who installed it took a thicker gauge wire of the original cord, cut it, 
took a lamp cord, which is thin, and spliced them together and then plugged it in the socket. Now I'm just like, come on. You could have took a couple extra seconds and just got the right cord for it and be in code. So that was number one. The number two, uh, they decided that it wasn't important enough to mount to the cabinet. So this is just a free floating dishwasher. And so, all right, um, took it out, got the new one unwrapped, hooked everything up, plugged it in, pushed the dishwasher back, and somewhere in that outlet, um, it's just like shade tree all the way around. Anyway, somewhere in that outlet, when I pushed the dishwasher back, it tripped a breaker. But the challenge was um, the person didn't know where the breaker box was. So we're sitting there like 20 minutes like, okay, where's the breaker box at? So we, 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 we found a breaker box, got it all taken care of, um, and you know was able to push the dishwasher back and mount it at a point where it didn't push against the wall outlet. So uh, customers should be getting that outlet looked at um, by her, um, she has like a, a handyman. But then went over uh, to the unit next and did a diagnostic on that dishwasher. It was a Whirlpool. Had a bad wash pump, so ended up coming back out there and doing that. Um, but those little things matter, you know. So when we have people in our home installing stuff, um, you know, just make sure you have licensed, uh, competent people who are going to do it the right way. Because a lot of times with those installs, if you're not paying attention, something could be hooked up the wrong way. Or if you're dealing with somebody who's just like, look, I'm a construction guy, but I can do it for you. Uh, they're going to use whatever tactics that they're familiar with, which may not be um, in your best interest. And so the next one I had was a slide in range. This was over in Crestwood. So this, now this was interesting. So this customer uh, owns an HVAC company and a plumbing company and has a slide in range, but on the slide in range, he identified that the control board was bad. It's a few months back. Put a new control board in. He put a new control board in. And, and it went out again. So he had gotten apart from Marcone. And so when I got over there, we had a conversation. And I just explained, it's like, it's like, hey, look, I checked everything out. We got good power coming in. You know, no voltage spikes, nothing like that. Um, in this case, sir, you just got a bad board. But this board was like 400 something bucks. I said, but like, that's a lot of money. So let's, let's call Marcone to see if we can um, at least get a credit or something. So while I was there, he made that phone call and um, they gave him a credit, which was awesome. So they credited him back for the board, like automatic credit. He's like, hey, I got a technician here. He said that the board, you know, should not have failed at this point in time. And um, yeah, I gave him on the spot credit. So he's ordering a new board, you know, and that made me feel good because like I told him, I, I, I wouldn't want to be out 400 bucks and have to spend that again uh, to get my appliance working right. You know, the expectation is when you get these parts, these parts are going to last, I mean, at least a year before you have any issue with them. So it, it was nice just being able to help. And, you know, we just sat there and we talked for a while. He, uh, he shared some of his business secrets. No, I'm going to say secrets, sorry. He shared some of his business experiences <laughs> You know, some advice, we talked about marketing, some different packages and things like that. And, um, and I just love that because I feel like I learn something from, from, uh, from people every day. And hopefully I'm able to uh, share and leave and impart something with them. You know, but, you know, for his service call fee, um, he's able to get the product he needed. I mean, he replaced the board once. So I'm just like, okay, you don't need me to come back and replace this board. You already know how to do it. So um, I, I, I know that made his day. Then I had another job. This was over in Smithfield. Uh, this was a washing machine. Interesting. Okay, so this is a customer 
who um, has used us before. We sent out flyers about two years ago. She took one of our flyers out of the mail and uh, put it in a drawer. And so she had a fridge issue and called us out there. And then now she had a washer issue and called us out there. So we were able to um, just get a better understanding from her. So what she told me is on her washer, the push button works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. Now this was a Whirlpool washer. So this is one of the Whirlpool washer where, like seriously, the push button is a piece of rubber. Like it's just a piece of rubber. So I'm talking to her and I'm like, ma'am, I was like, uh, so I'm not sure it's your button. It might be, you know, you have the integrated, I guess, push plastic on the control board. And that rubber piece is just like a covering, you know, just for your hand to be able to like push it in. She's like, oh, no, uh, this happened before. Um, I know it's the button. And I'm like, hmm, oh, no. I said, but okay, all right. So I showed up with all my parts, you know. I'm, I'm trying to fix a problem. So I show up, and lo and behold, y'all, it was the button. It was the, it was the, it was the rubber piece that she said. I said. I had to tell her, I said, I was like, man, you, I said, you need to come work for me. She's like, why? I said, because you knew exactly what was going on. Um, so, like, she take a boatload of money because that button wasn't very expensive. So it was just like her service call fee. But then while I was there, I identified that uh, she had the rubber hoses on her washer. And, you know, those aren't the best hoses to have. I guess the best way I could say it. So steel braid is the best ones to get. So I told her, I was like, look, I'm not going to charge you to come back when I'm in the area. Because she is out in Smithfield. <laughs> I said, when I'm in the area, I'll just swing by. You know, I'll put the, the hoses in my truck and I'll just change them out. And um, she was very happy about that. Um, but, you know, those are little things that we're able to do. You know, you don't necessarily pay to do them, but you do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. And it makes me feel good. Um, that's what That's kind of what our business is about. Uh, what else? So, oh, yeah, let me tell you about this one. All right. So this is in Pendleton, okay? <sighs> Customer has an LG washer. Yeah, I really got to follow this one. So last week, or maybe a week and a half ago, somewhere in the last two weeks, the city had to do work on the the water I guess the main the main water line or the main and so they turned off the water so her washing machines working perfect right well then they turned the water back on and now she runs a load of clothes and the water won't stop coming into the machine it just it keeps filling right she told me it was four hours like this machine has water coming in it for four hours and so in a washer you have like an overfill protection so as the water comes up to a certain level it starts draining out so imagine you're sitting in your home with the washing machine going four hours you unplug it water still coming in you plug it back in, water's still coming in. So she calls the city, or the county in her case, sorry. She calls the county. And she's like, hey, you know, what do I do? <laughs> and the guy says, oh, yeah, just turn the water off to your house. She's like, really? That's, that's your solution? So she calls me. I had been there before. I guess I'm programming her phone as the appliance guy. Yeah, that's a hey, public service announcement. Programming your phone under the appliance guy. 502-233-3088. Then when you have an appliance problem, you ain't got to look anywhere. Just go to your contacts and just type in appliance. All right. So anyway, I come out there. Found out that what's happened is the um, when the city turned the water back on. So think about this, right? You got these old pipes. 
water's running through it all the time. Then all of a sudden, like a pressure washer, right? You got this high pressure. Somebody's turned the water back on. So you got this high pressure come flying through the pipes. All the black stuff that's on the inside of those pipes. <laughs> like your arteries clogging. It came down range. Her water was murky in, it, murky in her dishwasher. I'm sorry, in her washing machine. The valves had all kind of black soot going through them. So what happened was the valve wouldn't close, right? So that valve should always be closed until you apply power to it to open it up. So in this case, you apply power, it opens up, but it can't close. So I had to end up switching those valves out. So she's going back to the city to see if, uh, sorry, the county. She's going back to the county to see if they will uh, reimburse her for that repair. But it was, it, was, it was good to be able to figure that out, <clears throat> to help her out. And, and to be able to explain why it's happening. Which leads me to this. The mark of a great repair person, outside of, you know, being where it's supposed to be when it's supposed to be there, which was scared into me by my drill sergeants at Lackland Air Force Base, San Antonio, Texas, which is why I'm scared to be late to an appointment. Well, I will always be on time. Um, but the mark of a great repairman is that he or she, it could be a repair woman, he or she is able to explain in layman's terms exactly what's happening and more importantly, why it's happening. And that comes from a firm foundation in theory. A lot of people can replace parts, right? A lot of people can watch YouTube. All right. That's, that, that's nothing, nothing new. But to get somebody that truly understands how everything works together, that's the mark of a great repair person. Just think of the analogy, right? If you have a bad heart, are you going to <laughs> the heart surgeon? Or are you going to the general the general guy who's like, yeah, I mean, I, I work on everything. I'm not really that deep in hearts, but I can get you through. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, but once again, that's just what I strive to do. I just want to provide great service. Um, service is important. I am accessible. I will always make it right. Um, I, I'm very fond of the, the customers I'm able to serve. And I just, day in, day out, I wake up, try to do a great job. I try to get all the training. I try to find out, you know, why things are happening. We reach out to manufacturers. Uh, we read the service bulletins. Like, we're just trying to get as much information possible, solve your problem, uh, try to solve it as soon as possible. I'm trying to get out there within 24 to 48 hours if I can. And I'm trying to solve the problem the same day. That's what I strive to do. So, hey, uh, it's been a pleasure talking to everybody. Hope you enjoyed this podcast. And I hope you have a great week. And if you need any type of appliance repair or you know anybody else needs appliance repair, please reach out to us. Website is wwwappliancepro to you the number two, uh, dot com. So wwwappliancepro to you dot com. And you can reach us at 502-233-3088. Phones are manned during the day, Monday through Friday. And then they roll over to my cell phone on the weekend, so I'll pick up. Um, but if I don't pick up, leave us a message. Uh, we do return calls, and we, and we try to be responsive. We just try to be good citizens. And um, all right, appreciate you. Hope you have a good one.